futile. We're going to play this clip and then go to Alfred Adask, who would dare chronicle the crime of the crime syndicate, who would dare point out the 10th and 9th Amendment of the states. That's why they hate him so much. Uh, let's go ahead and play a few minutes, and it gets even worse. They say in the newscast, if you criticize the Fed or anybody else, you're a cop killer. And the cops say, we've got to know who these people are. We've got to have a list. Well, that's what these threat fusion centers are all about. They want to know who the real Americans are. Here's the clip. Oh. What is a sovereign citizen? A sovereign citizen, in its simplest form, believes that he is above the law. J.J. McNabb has been studying sovereign citizens for a decade. She's testified before Congress and is writing a book about the movement. He has a twisted sense of history, and he thinks that people who lived in the 18th century were free of all legal constraints, and they want to return to that time now. Didn't have a fellow Jerry reserve. and Joe Kane were part of an anti-government Didn't have an end whose come roots tax. go back to the racist Posse Comitatus Didn't have a standing in the army. in the Montana Freeman of the 90s. Convicted Oklahoma City bomber Terry Nichols was a sovereign citizen. That was a federal operation, tax totally proven. by actor Wesley Snipes, convicted of tax evasion in 2008. He used tax loopholes the private banks used. Of sovereign language. Average sovereign citizen. But they're the only ones allowed to pay zero tax. 30, big bankers. 35, and he is in economic dire straits. Yeah, because of big um, fat parasites like you. Job. They've probably lost the wife. Paranoid? Uh, Many are. Conspiracy theorists? Most are. Do you trust the government? I would argue that it's un-American to trust the government. Alfred Adisk has been a sovereign citizen for 28 years. He's what's called a sovereign guru, one of the movement's leading voices. A roofer by trade, Adisk once published a magazine critical of the legal system. How dare you? Why is the sovereign citizen movement growing? What's driving people to it is they are beginning to understand that the government has moved away from fundamental principles that this nation is built on. Where are the limits in limited government? The sovereignty movement is attempting to dis rediscover those limits and reassert them. You're eligible for Social Security? Yes, sir. Do you collect? No. Why not? If you take these benefits, you wind up being in the status of a subject rather than a sovereign. You pay taxes? When they're due. You know, necessarily, it's not true that everyone has to pay taxes. Has the IRS ever come after you for back taxes? Yes. Did you pay? No. You don't like this government very much, do you? I think the government has gone far beyond its constitutional limits. They think, hey, we're not we're the government. We can do anything. And some people are saying, no, I don't think you can. Adisk, like other sovereign groups, All right, that's Albert his Adisk, and he internet. joins us now for five minutes into the next hour. We have a surprise, surprise guest for about 30 minutes or so after that in studio. Uh, Alfred, they are moving now from getting rid of the Bill of Rights, the name of fighting their Al-Qaeda brigades, which are now the heroes in, in Libya, we're told, to the domestic groups. I believe they're really thinking about staging some new domestic events so they can really come after people like you and I. And uh, it, it shows they're getting scared because you're, you and others are calling them out, Alfred. Well, I agree with you. And I think, you know, they have certainly stepped up their activity in recent times, but that's not necessarily evidence that they're becoming more powerful. It may be evidence that they're becoming more desperate. They realize this thing is coming to a head and they're trying to grab whatever they can before the whole thing explodes in their face. I think they see the direction things are going and I think they are perhaps desperate to stop people like you and me, thousands, millions of others that are beginning to understand, you know, this can't continue. Yeah, they're not building hardened bunkers in every city, and then we get the internal training manuals. It's not for guys wearing turbans that they know work for them. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's for the American people. They know they're criminals. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we are, we are living in difficult, dangerous, and interesting times. Uh, <clears throat> and the most important thing is to stand up. You know, the worst thing you can possibly do right now is hunker down and be quiet. It's precisely when they come up and they try to exercise, try to try to hit us with as much force as possible. They do that to intimidate people into being quiet. They do it to intimidate you into fear. <clears throat> you can't succumb to it. Now is the time when you really have to stand up. And if, and if at all possible, you need to stand up with other people at the same time.
Yeah, they're like a there. they're like a marlin fish on the line that's desperate and runs out a hundred or two hundred yards. That fish is getting tired. When he finally runs the hardest, you know he's about to give up, that's and right. that's why they're sticking the hands down the baby's pants. That's, that's why they're beating up photographers because they're they're running on that line desperately. They got blood coming out their mouth. Their hearts beating. Their muscles are burning. They're about to implode. Yeah, I agree. So the point to this is that. You know, if this system was operating smoothly, and if they were really running this, this, this operation, people wouldn't even be complaining. They wouldn't be suspecting. The sheep would be sheared, and they would thank the guy that sheared them and say, well, thanks very much for taking my fleece. It's because the system is on the edge of maybe losing control that it becomes desperate. That means now is the time for people like us, people that are listening to this program, you gotta stand up. This is our opportunity. It's not just our danger, it is our opportunity. All right, we're gonna come back. Uh, let's talk, let's chronicle some of their greatest crimes, their big frauds. The TSA saying resistance is futile. We can stick our hands down your pants anywhere we want. We are God where they're going, uh, and the, the, the type of persecution you've been under. We'll be right back. Folks, if you study the Bill of Rights Constitution, history, in any country uh, in history, this would be called tyranny, what we're living under. And I've got to be honest, I admire the illegal aliens. Um, they, most of them don't pay any taxes. They don't have any ID. They do whatever they want. And because they do it as a group, they're sovereign. They walk into a bank, no ID, they're given it. Uh, citizens, though, are kept basically like slaves, and the system wants to keep us down. It's like in that clip from A Bug's Life where the grasshopper's talking about, if you let one ant stand up, all the ants might stand up. And uh, i got to say, the illegal aliens behave a lot more like uh, old-time Americans did than we do. And now, the globalists want them there to drive down wages. That's why they let them you know, get away with it. But uh, more and more, uh, Alfred, I, I think it's because the illegal aliens just won't put up with it. Um, but, but, but continue breaking down why they're coming after the sovereign citizen movement, who this new world order is, and where you think we're going. The whole idea behind sovereignty, the, the sovereignty movement, and I mean, I don't even like that term. For me, it's not a, a, a movement. I'm not a member of any group. Freedom. Per se. Well, what it is, it's an idea whose time has come again. That's what it comes down to. And the whole question about sovereignty is who's running this country? Are we the people running this country or is the government running this country? What the sovereign citizens are essentially saying, we the people, just like it says in the Constitution, we're running this country. And the government says, no, you're not. You're a bunch of subjects. And that's what this is about. Who is in control? The government says, we got to pay. We got to obey all their laws. But the problem is the law goes in levels. You got God's law, number one. And then you have the law of the people, number two. And that law is enshrined in the constitutions at the state and federal level. That's the people's law. And then we get the law passed by government down at the bottom. The government says, we got to obey our law. And we're saying, no, you got to obey our law. You got to obey our law in the constitution. And the government says, no, we don't have to obey the constitution, but you got to obey our law. That's the guts of the sovereignty problem right now. Whose law is going to be followed? And ultimately, you're going to have God's law at the top. We'll take these clergy response teams that uh, Genesis talk show host, Pastor Butch Paul, first discovered. I was then sent hundreds and hundreds of pages, and the preacher got threatened over it. And people didn't believe the documents till two years later when national and local TV covered it and said how great it was. Oh, that tens of thousands of preachers are trained per year secretly to tell their flocks to submit and do whatever government says because Romans 13, out of context, Hitler's favorite verse to control the Germans, well, in America, we the people are the government. So render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. And, That's you know, exactly that idiot, right. Exactly. And, and that idiot from 60 Minutes was going, you know, you don't like the government. Alfred Adask is the government. Uh, well, you know, oh, well, you don't like to pay your taxes. We didn't have this till 1913. This is alien. Go ahead. Well, I, nobody's crazy about paying taxes, but the government's not crazy about obeying the Constitution. What is worse, a handful of people who aren't paying taxes or a government that's not obeying the Constitution? Why should we pay taxes to a government that doesn't obey the Constitution? Or that's run by banks that exempt themselves. That's really exactly. waking people up that all these mega banks pay almost zero tax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's they want all the little people to pay taxes and the big operators. Why doesn't the Federal Reserve pay taxes? It's a private company. Why don't they pay taxes? 
probably make more money than uh, anybody. But well, you know, it's Lord, come right? out. I've even seen it in the Washington Post some years they do a study. Upwards of half of Congress doesn't pay taxes, and nobody prosecutes them. Yeah. Yeah, if you're in the right way, and they can get away with it, undoubtedly, not simply because they have power, but because when they do get away with it, now there's leverage to come after them, and now they, they're on a leash. You don't have to pay taxes, but you better vote the way you have to vote. All right, we'll tell you how to vote. You get away with paying with not paying taxes, but if you step out of line, we're going to throw your butt in the slammer. It's the old corruption, how they try to get you into the corruption. Yeah, I understand. Well, no, I'm, I'm just making sure the listeners do. Alfred, I've got, I've got to get you on more often. We've got a long segment uh, coming up and a, and a couple more after that. And then we've got a surprise guest in studio scheduled. Uh, but when we come back from break here in an 18-minute segment, uh, I want to get into some of the outrages of these crooks and why you say they're illegitimate. Let's start rolling now. I mean, start. Okay, you want me to start talking now? Okay. Uh, no, I mean, what woke you up just briefly before we go to break? Oh, I went through a divorce in 1983. I was as fat, dumb, and happy as anybody else, and I went through a divorce, suffered injustice. One thing led to another, and I became a student of the legal system, and that's what really precipitated this and got this going. Uh, I never got, never quit, you know, and just keep on and you keep on. Um, I made a comment on the 60 Minutes program that. It's un-American to trust the government. A lot of people would find that remarkable. No, that's uh, true. Uh, stay oh, there. We're going to come back true. with that. We're going to come back stream. right there. Stay there. Uh, we're going to have the floor when we come back. Definitely have this guy back. I I've listened to him on the radio off and on for years. Always meant to get him on, and we've got him on now. Alfred Adask. Uh, it's adask.wordpress.com, A-D-A-S-K.wordpress.com. Our sites, of course, are infowars.com and prisonplanet.tv. We'll be right back with Alfred. Stay with us.